Hello, dear friends, welcome to the Summary Club. Today we will talk about female beauty, its ideals and standards in different cultural epochs. After all, the image of an ideal woman, as you probably already guessed, was not always the way we perceive it now. Each era dictated its own rules. Some can still be taken note of, while some will shock the aesthetically impressed. All the more so for the ways in which this beauty was achieved. The ideal of beauty, as it turns out, is a very relative concept. And how much it has changed over thousands of years, we will see in the top 7 ideals of female beauty in different cultural periods. Primeval Time The top 7 ideals of feminine beauty are opened by the primordial Venusians. What are these beauties, and to whose taste are they? Let's try to find out. Their time is the Paleolithic, the longest cultural epoch. What kind of women were admired for the longest time in history can be understood by looking at the figures of Paleolithic Venus. The most famous among them is the Willendorf woman. This precious woman is valued at $60 million. The oldest ceramic old lady was named Venus of Vestinitz after the place where she was found. Also in the company of these charming ladies, it is impossible not to mention Venus Lespigskaya. Charming. By the way, there is an assumption that the carver tried to create a semblance of a skirt on her. If this is true, then Venus Lespigskaya is the first beauty in a skirt in the whole world. What do these goddesses of the dawn of humanity have in common, besides a very solid age? It is very simple, appearance. The beauties of antiquity could boast very lush forms. Big breasts, steep hips, pronounced abdomen. Often they were portrayed as pregnant, but the face was rarely drawn. Not the most important part of the body, apparently. But the hair is detailed. What kind of beauty would deny herself a fashionable hairstyle? Nowadays such a Venus would hardly be an Instagram star, but she clearly knew how to bear children. This is what our ancestors worshipped. The cult of Mother Nature is the oldest known to science. If you are inspired, you can get acquainted with Paleolithic Venusians at the German Museum of Prehistory, the Vienna Museum of Natural History, and the Slovak Folk Museum in Bratislava. Antiquity. Everything was wonderful in antiquity until the Greeks came and established their canons of female beauty. They called it dot antiquity. And began to worship beauty, grace, and harmony. Now where to go poor ancient Venus? It's very simple, to lose weight and become marble. In the hands of ancient Greek sculptors with very complicated names, marble came to life and turned into especially revered goddesses. As you have already guessed, the most popular was the goddess of love. The Greeks called her Aphrodite. In the meantime, we can admire the legendary Aphrodite of Milos, the creation of Alexander of Antioch. Aphrodite turned out to be very modest. Catching the falling clothes, it is immediately clear that she is shy. Connoisseurs appreciated and even singled her out as a special type of Venus nids, shy. That's how a beauty with a slight blush and the words, well, don't look, I'm shy. The model for the image of the goddess of beauty was Praxiteles' beloved Hetera Farina. He was inspired by her beauty when he created his masterpiece. But has it ever heard of a mortal woman painting the image of a goddess? That is sacrilege. Frina was declared a godless woman and put on trial. Her defender, losing the case, as a last argument threw off Frina's clothes. The beauty of the Hetera so shocked the judges that she was found not guilty. They were impressionable fellows. But seriously, according to Greek ideas, perfection of body and soul are inseparable concepts. And if the body is beautiful, the soul cannot be ugly. The works of ancient sculptors embody the standard of beauty of the time, tall stature, thin waist, slender legs and graceful posture. The proportions of Venus of Milo's are still relevant today 86, 69, 93. You can get acquainted with the ancient beauties in the National Museum of Naples, in the Louvre. By the way, the three goddesses of the Louvre are Nika of Samothrace, Venus of Milo's and the incomparable Gioconda. Just for the sake of them, you can go there. Subscribe to the Summary Club and watch short versions of the most popular and useful videos every day. The Middle Ages. The Fair Lady, sung by the troubadours of the Middle Ages, is the next image of female beauty, which we will consider in the top ideals of female beauty today. By the end of the 12th century, the heavenly ideal of female beauty had become the image of the Virgin Mary, the Immaculate Mother of God, which on earth continued with the cult of the beautiful lady. The oval face was valued, for which women shaved their foreheads and temples. An aristocratic pallor was achieved by using lead-based whitewash. Belladonna tincture was put into the eyes to dilate the pupils and visually enlarge them. Female beauty has always been a temptation, and in the Middle Ages it was anathema. 
Care for appearance and any adornment of the face and body was condemned by the church and equated with mortal sins, such as pride and lasciviousness. So what? A modern person would think, but that's a modern person. But the medieval man remembered the fires of the Inquisition, where one could be thrown in jail, not only for blasphemy and heresy. By the way, it was also not customary to wash oneself. In some cases, bags of scented herbs were tied to the armpits to discourage the smell of sweat. If ancient culture was the embodiment of the sensual life of the Greeks, their understanding of sexuality, in the Gothic culture of the Middle Ages such freedom of manners was condemned and destroyed. Often at the fires, for which the Holy Inquisition never spared any wood. The beautiful ladies of the Middle Ages in the paintings of artists look as if they had been ill. To the shaggy-necked, flat-chested and pale beauties, knights dedicated their exploits in those dark times. But maybe there's something we don't understand about true beauty. Yes, we almost forgot another interesting point. It was also very fashionable to be pregnant. And when not pregnant, it also happened, under the dress, was placed a special roller to create the illusion of interesting situation. The art of the Middle Ages is dominated by Christian motifs. For example, all the paintings by Duccio of Siena glorify the Virgin Mary, from Madonna of Crivola to Madonna and Saints. If you decide to admire the masterpieces of the time, in addition to Italy, you can also go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Just this museum in 2004 bought Madonna Stocklet by Duccio for $45 million. The Age of Renaissance The Renaissance is a unique phenomenon in the space of cultural eras and a highlight in our top seven ideals of female beauty. The Dark Age of the Middle Ages lurks over the horizon and is replaced by the heyday of the Renaissance. This is the time when titans like Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci and Botticelli created. What did these recognized geniuses admire in female beauty? With their light hand a woman in art again becomes a goddess. To be convinced of this, it is enough to look at Botticelli's painting The Birth of Venus. And to understand deeper the standard of female beauty of that time, together we will try to study the masterpiece of the great Italian. The painting depicts, among other things, three beautiful ladies. In the center is Venus, born of the foam of the sea. The one with her hands shyly covered. Doesn't it remind you of antiquity? On the left is Flora, the goddess, passionately clinging to her lover. And on the right the most modestly dressed is Grace. If you look closely all three beauties, one face. That's how Botticelli has exalted the three faces of the same woman in a single painting. And now think, was this possible in the Middle Ages? Before it was over, beauty was no longer a devil's temptation, but a gift from God. The ladies of the Renaissance blossom in the loving eyes of the humanists. A healthy rounded complexion, a natural build slightly into fullness, and blonde hair are what a beauty of the time could be proud of. A little later, Titian and Rubens would add kilograms to the body and centimeters to the breasts and hips. From the fragile Venus with sloping shoulders to the statuesque, fat ladies who are said to be blood with milk, the road was not so far. To get acquainted with the creations of the masters of the Renaissance is best in Italy and Florence, where this cultural era originated. Baroque and Rococo The harmony and naturalness of the Renaissance in our top benchmark of female beauty is replaced by the flamboyance and theatricality of the Baroque. Baroque in Portuguese means a pearl of irregular shape. So what is this irregularity? The beauties of this time stopped valuing simplicity and naturalness. To remain oneself is. Five wild, ignorant and in bad taste. The motto and manner of court ladies becomes affectation, pageantry, theatricality, and decorativeness. A riot of color, drama, and emotion bursts into the art. See Diego Velázquez's Venus in the mirror or Titian's work of the same name. Velázquez's goddess inspired Francisco Goya's Matcha Nude in the 18th century and a certain suffragette, Mary Richardson, in the 20th century to inflict grievous bodily harm on the painting. Apparently, Mary decided that you can't show people such shamelessness, and seven strokes with a cleaver will solve the issue. We can reassure those who are worried, Venus with a mirror has been restored and now is doing well. But we are a little distracted, and we must return to the Baroque beauties. How did they see their ideal? The body was still rich and lush, but with a thinner waist. How to achieve this? Long live a new invention, probably the same inquisition, the corset. The corset, together with a wide hooped skirt, made a woman's silhouette look like an upside-down shot glass. A little later in the Rococo period, corporeality would go out of fashion. Women would resemble fragile porcelain statuettes. Muted colors would soften the hearts of beauties. 
but the theatricality will remain in force. The image of the vanilla shepherdess will be played up with so much makeup that even those close to her will not always be able to recognize the court lady. They wear three-tiered wigs on their heads for weeks, lice are the pearls of God, they are not taken out, they are saved with flea traps. Yes, it is still not customary to wash in Europe. You can wash off your baptismal water. Have you drawn a picture in your head? It's a bit complicated. For simplicity, we can think of the Sun King Louis XIV and his favorite, Madame Pompadour, the acknowledged Rococo Queen. Victorian Era In the 19th century, Queen Victoria of England ruled the ball of beauty, fashion, and morality. It is to her, we pass the baton of the top ideals of female beauty. The queen was not only a ruler, but also a wife and mother. Her behavior and moral character set the tone for all English society. The matrons welcomed the image of a religious, economic and taciturn young lady. Men wanted at least a little eroticism. And somewhere between the two extremes was the ideal of female beauty of good old England in the 19th century. Finally, women took off the huge wigs, but not completely. The ladies continued to use artificial curls and hairpieces. They generously oiled their hair for a special smoothness. Bright makeup is not trendy. Only actresses and other bad women allow themselves vulgar face paint and provocative clothes. But the shoulders can bear all. The pale complexion, which comes back in style from time to time, was achieved with zinc oxide. It was also possible to draw blue strands of veins for a special aristocratism. Look at Effie Gray, the inspiration for the Pre-Raphaelite painters and a symbol of Victorian beauty. Pale, but with a slight blush and gleam in her eyes. Sounds like the symptoms of tuberculosis. On the sidelines, this disease, incurable at the time, was called the disease of the intelligentsia. A rounded shape, but the waist was tightened rigidly into a corset. Its constant wearing prevented normal breathing and deformed the figure. Wife, but no children, as her husband did not touch her, making the excuse that he was afraid of spoiling her beauty. As a result, their marriage was dissolved, Effie married a second time and had eight children. You could say that at least this story ended well. This concludes our discussion of feminine beauty of all times. Next comes the 20th century. When, as we know, the ideals of beauty changed every decade. So next time we will talk about Greta Garbo, Coco Chanel, Marilyn Monroe and the rules of feminine beauty that they set when they reached the zenith of their fame. Thank you for your attention, to all kindness, good mood, and, of course, physical health and beauty as you yourself understand it. And friend, don't forget to subscribe to the Summary Club for becoming more successful, educated, kinder and wiser every day. Save hundreds of hours and dollars spending on boring regular education. Feel free to write your opinions and questions about each video. We read all the comments. In addition, go to our official website, where you can find reading materials or watch other videos on channel and links in the description. All the best.